Hi, Manchu. Good evening, sir. So all set. सुबह खाना नहीं खाया शाम को खाना नहीं खाया नहीं ऐसा कुछ नहीं गणेश भाई के डर से नहीं रे <laughs> मेरे डर से नहीं एक बार सर का बर्थडे आज ना हाँ बर्थडे सर क्या कर रहे हैं सर बैठे आपको सुन रहा हूँ मैं हैप्पी बर्थडे सर अच्छा है एकदम मस्त बैठे आप तेरे से <laughs> तो who are four answering today मैं दिखा दूँ एक मिनट निखिल राकेश yes then uh, who else sir uh, uh, myself हिमांशु सर हिमांशु गोहिल from PD Hindujah Uh, Dr. Mrigaanka is answering. Dr. Nikhil Amir Chetty and Dr. Yasir. Good, good. ये बराबर है. Yes, बराबर. दिख रहा है ना? Yeah, yeah, दिख रहा है. And uh, I hope all of you. ये original था. See, you so actually. To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. बोल गणेश. नहीं नहीं. This was discussed in Dr. Karanja वाला symposium. ये बताना था मतलब because nobody will know who is who was he. नहीं correct. सर आप ही बोलिए बेटर रहेगा नहीं 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 यू ओनली टेल इनिशियली लेट अस वेट फॉर फोर फाइव मिनट लेट मेनी पीपल आर जॉइनिंग सो नॉर्मली दे जॉइन बाय नाइन नाइन फाइव सो वी स्टार्ट बाय नाइन फाइव एंड इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग आई वांट टू टेल ऑल ऑफ देम दैट वी आर जस्ट प्रिपेयरिंग यू नॉट ओनली फॉर दिस वाइवा इन योर एग्जाम बट ऑल्सो इन योर ओपीडी एज वेल एज वेन you now go and present your cases now because in now say 6 months or one year you are going to be consultants so you should know how to you know behave like a consultant and uh, how to think as a consultant so ganesh will prepare in this particular uh, presentation that uh, you will be you know how to present yourself so that is the most important thing So Ganesh, we just wait for five minutes. Yes, sir. No problem. Yeah. And uh, uh, Achin. Yes, sir. I have talked to Ganesh, sir. So after his few cases, in between he will give uh, that ten minutes. Okay. 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 For our uh, case presentation, okay. and in that uh, you can present. Okay. And accordingly, we can just ask few questions, differential diagnosis, and then he will continue again. Okay. Ah, uh, Amjit sir, who will present the slide, sir? Sorry. Who will be present slide? Uh, Ganesh sir will be presenting initially. Then I will present. Yeah. Sir, I will I, uh, make calls to Yasir. Uh, Yasir alone. Uh, uh, today, four people are answering. One is Doctor Mriganka. Make him co-host. One is okay, Doctor Yasir. Make him co-host. Okay, sir. Then Doctor Himanshu Gohil. Make him co-host. And last one is Doctor Nikhil Amir Chetty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mahendra. Nice to see you. How was your exam? 
How was your exam? All fine? Mahendra, how was your exam? Exam, Mahendra, kya was soon nahi raha lagta hai. Mahendra, can you hear us? Achha, usne mic. Haan. Yes, sir. Now you can hear it. Yes. So happy birthday, sir. Exam? Happy birthday. Hello. How was your exam? I'm. We. I'm just asking you. It went well, sir. Waiting for result. Let us see. मिल जाएगा, मिल जाएगा. अगर party दोगे हमको तो pass हो जाओगे. Sir, कल ले लो. Sir, कल ले लो party. लो इस weekend पे party कर लेते हैं. मैं party दे देता हूँ. Gita sir has joined. दिख नहीं रहे सर सर यस सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग यस गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग आवाज आ रही नहीं बैकग्राउंड आवाज बहुत आ रही है या बैकग्राउंड आवाज गौरव का सर का बर्थडे है विश यू अ वेरी हैप्पी बर्थडे फॉर गौरव हम्म हैप्पी बर्थडे सर Thank you, thank you, Mahendra. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday, sir. Gita sir, good evening. Good evening, good evening, sir. क्या करें चालू करें ओके आई थिंक वी हैव चार्ज देर लगा लेते हैं बाद में चालू करते हैं वी हैव गोट मेनी पीपल है ना यस यस वी हैव गोट कितने पीपल चलो ठीक है गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी ये स्क्रीन शेयर ऑफ द सेम स्लाइड आई थिंक वी कैन सी द स्क्रीन यस वी कैन सी द स्क्रीन एंड एक्चुअली वाई आई पुट दिस स्लाइड इज आई हैड प्रेजेंटेड दिस इन द डॉक्टर करंजा वाला सिंपोजियम इन वेस्ट जोन यूएसआई यूसी कॉन एट गोवा रिसेंटली सो दिस इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ पिनाइल कैंसर केसेस वॉट फॉलोज दिस and uh, we thought it would be good to conduct it as a panel kind of a discussion where we all have four students on the panel and we already have so many teachers here okay so to start with dr karanja wala who used to actually teaches when i used to be a student and attend bombay hospital clinics but he was a legend in indian urology and this slide had been put for a good time and we hear you know millins prostatectomy so he had worked under terence millins and badenox is a urethroplasty procedure so he had worked with him also and then he was at km and bombay hospital all these prestigious awards padma shri dhanvantari he was of of course uh, president of usi and on the editorial board of bjui so he was a very nice man and for a personal interaction really academician very good teacher and very human i mean when i used to interact with him he was pretty old but about him it's nice to sometimes remember 
our seniors and teachers. So uh, going ahead, uh, it showed my connection is unstable. You can hear me, right? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So these are our panelists. Uh, all four are there, right? Muganka, Nikhil, Yasir, and Himanshu. So yes, for you, what I need to tell you is, uh, instead of saying ki, I will ask you this question, that question, I have actually put names against the questions. So try to answer as you have read. I am sure you must have read nicely. And uh, obviously, whatever is uh, remaining, if it is gross, a colleague of yours can answer. And if it is something still, then we are always there. Okay. So one of the teachers would chip in how to talk, how to evaluate, we will go through. So most of the points would probably be completed in this uh, seven, eight cases. So this is a 47 year old male, no comorbidities and has a lesion. The picture is clear. One by 1.5 centimeter prolative growth. It's on the as you see the external urethral no, no, no. no skip lesion. Picture is not seen, sir. Scenario one slide is just seen. The inside material of picture is not seen. But everybody yeah, seeing same. I can see the picture. This is inter uh, sir, so internet there is slow. I mean I can see here. Yeah. Yeah, I can I see, see the picture. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We can see. Okay. Yes, sir. Now 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 so, I'm sir after internet problem, right? But okay, no problem. Uh, so yes, clinically yes, no groin nodes. This is a intro picture. So the biopsy is moderate, moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma and there was a USG for the groins done. Okay. So hmm. clinically CN0, groins not palpable. Hmm. USG for the groins done, NED. Hmm. So the first question is to Dr. Mraganka. How will you counsel and treat? Uh, sir, good, good, good evening, sir. We will counsel him uh, uh, regarding the uh, complica uh, complications and uh, if not treated, uh, the mortality rate is high. And uh, if uh, we offer him penile preserving surgery, then how to follow up, but, uh, whether, he, whether he is intent to follow up, then, uh, then uh, whether he wants to go for just a second. Whether he wants to go for penile preserving surgery or sir uh, partial uh, panectomy and uh, uh, how to these are the things. So out of the whole things in counseling, we follow a usual pattern. We talk about the disease, probably the probable pathologies which was mentioned, then probably we talk about the stage okay yes sir. and you mentioned one thing i'll talk about the mortality so if i seriously ask you such a small lesion 1.5 centimeter do you think he's going to die in two months sir if he if he goes untreated the chances of uh, sir lymph node metastasis and probably leading to metastasis would be high please if not treated i cannot give you so if we do not treat the primary lesion, no. so and if we my do, question do not... is ahead of that, what is the natural history of penile cancer then? So natural history of penile cancer would be sir, uh, uh, lymph node involvement followed by metastasis and uh, erosion of the gray, uh, femoral artery leading to massive hemorrhage. When a question of natural history is asked, you can't answer it so plainly. You have to tell something happens and some time duration or some statistics with that. It's a, it's this natural history is a full, I think, uh, one page in Campbell's urology. Yes. So you, you need. 
Mrigaanka and all the other students, I think you should pay attention to what Dr. Ganesh Bakshi is saying. If you talk to, just think about that you are sitting in the clinic and you tell the patient that you know if you don't treat this, you are going to die. He might just faint there. So the approach was uh, you may have read everything and I understand that you cannot answer it in four lines, but you need to have an approach. So counseling has to start with explaining the patient what is the problem. He doesn't know what penile cancer is. You have to tell him about the disease. You have to tell him about how it can progress. You can tell him what happens to the uh, other organ involvement. And what is, the, what is the purpose of treatment? And like sir said, you have to give some, you have to give some statistics. No? Either Mrigan can answer or Ganesh, you can ask someone else. Hello. Ah, yes, Ganesh. I think Ganesh, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, Meganika, maybe uh, Dr. Bakshi wanted to say this thing when there is a pattern of everything. Pattern yes, of, uh, uh, say in cancer, uh, pattern of spreading is from the primary to the lymph node, lymph node to the uh, uh, first station, then second station, then to the distant part, right? Or it generally happened, the First, primary also increases in size, changes the morphology, local extension, in local uh, site involvement. So you have to describe like this. Directly in two lines, you cannot uh, jump into the distant metastasis. The mm. growth, uh, growth of the lesion, uh, depending on the grade, depending on the uh, T stage, depending on the pathology, yes. right? And yes. Uh, sir, and, the main question of uh, uh, Bakshi sir was the how will you counsel the patient, right? Yes, Treatment yes. comes after the counseling. And suppose that you are in some problem and how will you like to be counseled? You have to counsel in that way. You have to put yourself in the patient uh, uh, situation and then you have to assume how you would be uh, like to be counseled, right? Sir. Yes, so sir. so it, it, what is it? What is the patient is having? in a very polite way, having cancer. Because what we have observed that when anybody has a cancer, these uh, a few letter uh, word, uh, uh, this thing, they are half uh, uh, dead maybe uh, psychologically, right? Yes. And if you if immediate saying that ki you were going to die in two years, again, he will go into depression. Right? So, yes, yeah, sir, we can... Uh, uh, Tell him the progress, natural progression of the disease by explaining that it uh, will uh, involve uh, the and uh, it may extend to the shaft of the penis and then probably it may also involve the urethra. So Mariganga, Mariganga, and, again, 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 think about this particular slide and this picture. Sir has shown you very categorically 1.5 centimeter superficial lesion without any nodes. If yes, you sir. go to all those extreme scenarios, yes. then again patient is going to faint and die in front no, no, no. of him. Yes, uh, yes, sir. I, I can hear me? So, yes, sir, we can hear you. So, uh, see, basically at this stage, how will you counsel and treat goes to this question on the on this, this particular, as Dr. Hiren was saying. Okay, so this is a 1.5 centimeter lesion yes, on the sir. glands going on the corona. Yes, sir. We so can. We expect a slightly we better will... answer. Yeah, penile so, preserving. Yes, sir. That's okay. I think we should go ahead. So, Himanshu, a question to you is what would be the options in such a patient for a penile preserving surgery? Sir, uh, in this patient, the lesion is involving uh, the glands and extending into the uh, corona and probably involving part of the spongiosum or uh, urethra, but it is not obvious. So first, uh, uh, what we can uh, do is do uh, uh, a, a glansectomy, which can be a, a, a partial glansectomy uh, in this patient. And... Uh, then uh, 
Is your margin is to technically here? Okay, we can try something. No problem. And uh, see the uh, send the lesion for frozen section. If the margin is negative, uh, then we are safe. Uh, but if the margin comes out to be positive, we might have to extend the resection and go ahead with a partial amputation of the penis, which I would like to counsel the patient beforehand. Okay, no problem. That is good. So, any other options you have? We discussed, I think, wide local excision, yeah. extended version of a glancectomy. Per se, glancectomy would be for a lesion which is perfectly on the glands, and we yeah. could remove yeah. the glands. The glands anatomically is a part of corpus spongiosum. Spongiosum. Yeah. So, yes. if you really dissect well with the good scissors and forceps, you should be able to get the plane between the corpora and the glands. The urethra yes. coming through the glands, and you can do a glancectomy. But here it is on the corona. So, yes. you rightly said we can extend a little bit and we can see otherwise a wide local excision. Any other options? Sir, uh, this is uh, node negative. Uh... Sir is asking Any local, one? local resection. Any other options? Which so are see, using have... for stones? Sir. Uh, laser ablation can be. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, these are options now. So uh, this tumor is pretty big for a topical treatment, obviously. Yes. So something is like a laser ablation with CO2 laser. It just cuts like a knife only, but yes. it's a laser. Hmm. Uh, for a slightly smaller tumor, only on the glands, you could have a glands resurfacing. resurfacing. And if you see that for a region on the glands and distal, distal lesions, which are less than four centimeters, radiotherapy is still an option. Yes. Sir. Okay. So these are all options yes. actually. So, uh, Dr. Nikhil, prob what are the problems in assessing margins of such strategies? So, for example, this, wide local excision. So, preceding this, the question would be, suppose if you are having a squamous cell cancer lesion on the penis, what would be adequate margins? Sir, it depends on the, the grade of the tumor. Now, right. the recommendation is like if it is G1 tumor that we are dealing, so around 3 mm margin is good enough, sir. If it is G2, then 5 mm margin. If it is G3, it's 8 mm margin. Correct. Or the so, other classification is G1 and G2, we can go for 5 mm and G2, 10 mm. So when we are doing, say, wide local excision as penile preserving surgery, then how yes. do you take care of those things? So here because in uh, biopsy... The strategy is penile preservation. If I take a 5-6 millimeter margin, I'll obviously open the urethra somewhere. Yes. Sir, sir here, uh, I don't uh, think we can... Before that, sir, I would like to actually clinically palpate and say how far is the region extending on the on the this is the ventral part because clinical examination is better. Still, if I'm not convinced, then I can go for an MRI whether it is the involvement of the spongiosum is there or not because automatically it will become a T3 tumor and uh, any kind of uh, glance preserving or anything would be compromising the oncological uh, principles. I feel so partial amputation would be one thing because I feel adequate length can be given in partial amputation as we can stand in word and also the sexual function. Your question is not, not that. If you don't answer your question, please answer. I mean, your question was with wide local excisions. How do you assess the margins? So I guess, I mean, we'll take opinion of Dr. Mahindra. When we do wide local excision. Uh, so in wide local excision, we have to see the lateral margin and the depth of the uh, uh, of the lesion, how much it is. We should, we have to see depth of the lateral margin. So it depending, again, depending on the uh, grade, if it is, if we have that, and it should be at least one to five mm, uh, depending. But problem, again, we have to see the disfiguring of the glands. So generally, right. when we attempt such wide local excision or procedures, we send the piece for frozen specimen, as Dr. Himanshu said. And then we look for directly negative margins. Because here, we are going to compromise the normal things. If we didn't want a penile preserving strategy like that, we would have opted directly for a partial penectomy. But, uh, right, Mahindra? Is it yeah, okay yeah, that way? Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, one more thing. Now, uh, Nikhil, the just... question is, yeah. Yeah, will it be oncologically safe? Yeah, go on.
so the question is wide local excision if we do and we have lesser margins but negative margins will it be oncologically safe hello hello so i guess nikhil is not there so sir, Mahindra, sir, no, is it is it to me sir yeah nikhil is here yes sir sir i was not knowing sir oncologically safe uh, because uh, in uh, biopsy they have got it as moderately differentiated so uh, it is a g2 tumor i suppose sir so uh, oncological safety i am not very technically sure. it is not like that i mean again coming back to wide local excision i may not have a 5 mm margin in a wide local excision because that might totally disrupt the urethra if i go down 5 mm but it is oncologically safe because i have seen by a frozen section analysis now the other problem is how would you select a patient for uh, penial preserving strategies i think i should ask that to himanshu sir himanshu. uh one thing is the uh, grade of the tumor uh, the t stage of the tumor uh, the site of the tumor where exactly it is uh, and if we can assess the depth of the tumor uh, by an uh, high frequency ultrasound or yeah, an mri uh, imanshu i would interrupt you uh, site size yes i mean grade okay if it is poor or sarcomite wide probably we need to be a little bit radical yes sir uh, i don't think we should go by the depth because in counseling about this surgery even if i'm going to do a wide local excision i'm going to tell the patient that it is going to be this sos partial penectomy sos partial yes, so if i'm going to see the depth which if it is going down okay i would take a intra op decision and do a partial yes, so will it be oncology safe one big thing you are missing is it will be oncologically safe Yes, we sir. select such patients for penile preserving strategies who are actually educated, who understand and who want this penile preservation, and who will follow up with a good compliance. Yeah. So that is also expected out of this answer, actually. Yes. Sir. Okay. So anything, Mahendra, you want to add? I said just uh, one uh, uh, thing. Uh, Nikhil just was telling about the uh, role of uh, sonography or uh, MRI. If it is in the subsequent question, then I can skip that. Hey, the role of sonography is like every wide local excision. We don't do a sonography very clearly. If we are in doubt of anything, we do do a sonography or an MRI. So usually we have been doing that probably in cases which are not easily palpable hmm. and which have a uh, induration or uh, there is a shaft lesion with induration going on into the root of the penis. where we actually don't know what is the margin how is the disease inside for the primary we do sonography high frequency or an mri in these conditions so for okay? proximal lesion yeah so right sir uh, proximal lesion mri has a more specificity and sensitivity and for distal lesion high frequency ultrasound is more specific and yeah. when you do mri But Uh, by the pharmacological agent, you have to have an artificial erection to achieve a proper uh, knowledge of uh, the depth of the lesion. So this table it shows you some recurrence rates and uh, cancer-specific death rates. So if you see with many of these penile preserving strategies, even partial parenchyma is included in the seventh, eighth number. so the local, local recurrence, recurrence rates yeah. are seen there is around an average local recurrence rate of around 18% and there however the cancer specific deaths in most of these studies have been low so it goes from anywhere uh, except for one series it has gone to 2 to 9% so that's quite okay sometimes acceptable now these are things which are done a similar if you see this lesion is totally on the glands then uh, this is called as glands resurfacing and then um, there has been a uh, this is a 2017 jou publication where a prospective study for total glands resurfacing for localized penile cancer has been done and it looks to be a good viable acceptable option for glands preservation in patients with localized penile cancer acceptable functional oncologic outcomes 
so most of these places uh, the tumor has been cut uh in the methodology all these tumors have been sent for a frozen section margins declared negative and as i said it's uh, the participants or the uh, patients included are all those who are educated and going to comply with in follow up these are few other procedures where an excision is done a flap is raised and a flap can be put like this so it's called a prepucial flap surgical glands defect covered with outer prepucial flap as described so these are some types of penile preserving strategies and uh, coming to radiation so uh, yasir can you yes, if you have read can you tell us about radiation as a means of penile preserving approach uh, yes sir radiation uh, is one of the not commonly used uh, penile preserving approach for the treatment of yes, we understand uh, that but uh, please tell us about preserve. when it can be used how it can be used what are the pros and cons uh, Uh, the the so benefits you, are that uh, you are finding it difficult. Less invasive than the. We need to be a little more specific. Other uh, other things, uh, patient doesn't have to undergo the surgery, uh, but the disadvantage is that the uh, recurrence, lower recurrence with uh, this approach is high. The rest. How much? How much? Uh, ten to. Uh, so the range is from ten uh, to thirty percent. Anybody else would chip in for that answer? No one. Radiation. Sir, uh, radiation is uh, usually uh, used as a primary uh, approach in case of uh, distal penile lesions. Which are less than four centimeters uh, and T one T two lesions, and uh, there are two modes of giving uh, radiation: either external beam radiotherapy or brachytherapy. Correct. Where, uh, brachytherapy is more uh, effective as compared to external beam radiotherapy, and uh, regarding uh, counseling of the patient. Uh, this patient needs to be made aware about the uh, possible complications and uh, their management post radiation Perfect. yeah so so if you go for the benefits again most importantly it is a penile preserving avoiding surgery which very few people will want case selection i think you have mentioned everything uh, as far as the uh, types of radiation we have uh, ebrt and brachy Breaky, we have LDR, HDR, yeah. so we can put seeds. Or usually in penile cancer, what happens is you put a, a we give a radiation dose by the source. Hmm. Uh, EBRT is given with a penile mold. Mold. And so uh, but, yeah, while counseling, you have to counsel about the complications of uh, what might happen. There can be sometimes. Uh, problems with respect to you know, glands uh, skin i mean mucosa and uh, we could have some fistulas urethral fistulas can happen yeah, secondly last thing is recurrence so any difference in follow ups so usually there is no difference in follow ups after radiation you should not forget that the patient is still a patient of ca penis and you need to follow up in the same manner post radiation sometimes there can be a persistence of reddish uh, lesions or reddish uh, appearing uh, surface on the glands and it happens many times as a normal post radiation uh, finding so this case was a moderately differentiated squamous cell cancer pt1 margins negative 2 mm at the least lvi plus so lvi yeah lymphovascular invasion so uh, imanshu what would you look or what would you want a pathologist to give you sir uh, sir whether there is any uh, 
perineural invasion uh, in okay. the final report um, uh, sir, means what, uh, what all information you want from the pathologist i have given sir, you first is something. the subtype uh, where, with uh, what is the subtype of the tumor then okay. uh, uh, second is the uh, depth of the tumor grade of the tumor then uh, uh, lymphovascular invasion is already mentioned and uh, that's these four things hpv hpv status hpv status yes so why why do we want hpv status sir maine likha hai wo sir uh hpv status sir uh, patients with hpv have got a better prognosis as compared to non hpv uh, related malignancy so should it I... is mandatory to mention uh, no i mean always hpv will not have yes somebody was saying more yasir yes please uh, sir uh, first is the anatomical uh, side then the type plus sub type of the tumor uh, then i think the uh, hello uh, we, we let us not repeat the things because uh, what happens is whenever somebody is joining for an answer you you tell the extra things which you have uh, sir uh, surgical margins we can ask uh, okay. from the histopathological and plus uh, hpv status he has mentioned also okay so so if you have a basic of squamous cell cancer they are papillary basaloid warty verrucous sarcomatoid mm -hmm. out of that basaloid and sarcomatoid mm -hmm. are actually the most aggressive ones yes, right yes sir so according to we also have hpv related histologies and non hpv related histologies so today sarcomatoid adenosquamous they come in non hpv related yes basaloid and its variants warty papillary they all come in basaloid warty papillary hpv related histologies so so technically both are important we do say yes. that this is not malign i mean aggressive that is not aggressive but the basaloid per se comes in hpv related the yes. sarcomatoid and adenosquamous per se come in the non hpv related so remember this that you are there is hpv warty basaloid it's one or two types uh, papillary and uh, something then it also has a clear cell and lymphoepithelium lymphoepithelial type huh? so this is generally supposed to be a pathology report yes clinical information is usually to be produced by the surgeon and what we did then macroscopic tumor di di dimension description which you all mentioned in between are totally pathological features histological tumor type grade microscopic maximum dimensions extent of invasion lvi peri pni margin status in millimeters which we want and what is a different we have not done yet now and the p16 status for the hpv so prognosis as per variants okay we have uh, prognosis different variants of the penile squamous cell cancer so the good prognostic ones do have destructive local growth the metastasis hardly happens the risk of cancer related mortality is really low and as we commonly know verrucous papillary warty pseudo hyperplastic carcinoma cuniculatum all these are good prognostic ones bad are basaloid sarcomatoid adenosquamous which we just spoke and mm. the intermediate ones are usual squamous cell cancer mixed forms pleomorphic mixed so for oh, this question is to dr mriganka we have all these features how to proceed further so moderately negative so since there is a lymphovascular invasion uh, mm -hmm. there is high chance of lymph node uh, lymph node involvement so we will either go for prophylactic lymph node uh, uh, we will go for lymph node biopsy uh, either by sentinel lymph node biopsy or if palpable we can also do fnse biopsy and 
so tell me one thing come on suppose if i change this right now i say moderately differentiated pt1 margin negative and lvi negative ha we will drop the lymphoid dissection prophylactic so we will still uh, uh, we will uh, we'll give we will still go for uh, you just said that because lvi is there i am going for a lymph node dissection sir if there is a uh, uh, if it is a tertiary care and we have a dynamic lymph node, sentinel lymph node biopsy availability mm -hmm. then we will go ahead with sentinel lymph node biopsy and avoiding the prophylactic uh, lymph node dissection why so complication associated with uh, lymph node uh, inguinal lymph node dissection is uh, seroma slab necrosis and all that so to prevent those hmm. complications we would prefer to have a although the chances of false positive uh, false negative is high but uh, if we do dynamic lymph node uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy it's quite so reasonable sentinel lymph node biopsy you will save the complications suppose if you are in a tertiary to then what will you do at this moment so at this moment we will uh, go for this uh, since we have already treated the primary tumor we will uh, uh, we will uh, go uh, while treating the primary tumor we would have gone for a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy mm -hmm. sir while doing uh, glenectomy or the whatever surgery we have done mm -hmm. the tumor of the penis we would have done at the same time uh, this one sir dynamic lymph node biopsy got i understand you said that but you said first you said if lvi is there i will do a lymph node dissection then you said if lvi is also negative if it is a tertiary institute then i'll do a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy so i asked you lvi is negative it is not a tertiary institute then what will you do so then uh, we would have uh, and the lymph node that are ne negative uh, non palpable clinically n0 n0 so then we would just follow follow him up uh, with uh, uh, a three uh, three monthly follow up clinically palpation and till the lymph node becomes enlarged have you have you heard of a restratification roganka yeah restratification so sir based on that parameters what is the will... importance of restratification so uh, this uh, whether it is a uh, low risk intermediate risk and high risk accordingly we will follow up the patients so what is its importance in deciding about management of the groins in a cn0 see if anybody doesn't know any particular answer please say so so we can go to the next candidate at least so i am not able. so anybody nikhil you want to take that question why is risk stratification important yes sir because uh, here the risk stratification gives us the idea like how much is the chance of spread to the lymph nodes though it is clinically negative so if the, the here uh, the scenario is that this patient is having t1 and moderately differentiated which makes it as grade 2 and this patient is having lymph node positive uh, lvi positive so it will become t1 b g2 sir. so the chances of spread in t1 b g2 is subclinically around 25 to 40% chances of spread is there to the lymph node though they are negative so i would like patient to patient falls in the intermediate risk uh, intermediation yes. where we should probably address the groin nodes groin. prophylactically yes so that should have been the answer mruganka yes sir so okay so no palpable inguinal nodes in t1 g2 and above we should do what you are saying is okay do a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy but yes. then if you are not in a tertiary institute you don't have an answer that is not correct yes. so what would what can be done nikhil suppose if so called you are in a tertiary institute so if uh, dslp is not there sir, then we can directly go for uh, superficial node dissection and send that uh, for the frozen section sir if any node comes positive then we can go for complete uh, node dissection and if more than two on one side come positive of the nodes sir then we can go for a pelvic lymph node dissection also the other side also the same sir. if it comes negative then the patient can get follow up on the other side okay uh, we would need any expert comments from dr mahendra pal or mahendra could you summarize that for the students 
Yes, sir. I uh, I just wrote in the chat box also uh, when you have a, a biopsy and you have a primary uh, a HPR of the primary and the clinical findings, then you have to first stratify the disease, and then based on that stratification, you have to characterize the possibility of lymph node metastasis and presence of LVI. Just like I mean, this is this patient is having uh, LVI along with the uh, G two and T one. So this patient having more risk of lymph node metastasis uh, uh, compared to no LVI. So so in these cases you should go ahead with the prophylactic uh, uh, granular dissection. If it is no LVI, then again for the good compliant compliant patient you can you can, you can observe him. But again non compliant patient you should go ahead with the prophylactic GND. So this is how uh, you should go ahead with the uh, these patient with the uh, uh, clinical and zero grinds. I think Mahendra, uh, you need to guide on this also. Suppose if there is no frozen section facility, what should be the thought process? Uh, so on that, if there is a grossly, uh, suppose that we are doing a grand node and we find found a, a node over there, and patient is again not a compliant patient, then we should go ahead with the allium vinyl uh, node dissection in those, those patients. If it is a compliant, if you understand the thing, we can only do the uh, complete job and just observe the pelvic nodes. Okay, I mean, let us ask uh, Dr. Gite, sir, Aapka kuch kena is on this scenario. No, no, for this scenario, if there is no frozen section available, then what will you do in C and zero and where the risk is intermediate or high? See, my answer is like this. If it is, say, intermediate or high risk and I do not have a frozen section facility, I'm in that remote area, I'll tell the patient, I'll do a complete inguinal dissection, not do a pelvic dissection. I'll do a complete inguinal dissection in one incision and send it to, for a histopathology. I'll see what it comes, accordingly address the pelvic uh, nodes. So Mahendra, this is about when there is absolutely no frozen section facility, what can be done? So again, sir, as, as you said, but before that, we have to consult the patient. He may uh -huh. require second surgery if the node yeah. becomes positive final HPR. But definitely, we have to go ahead with the complete uh, complete uh, GND. So pelvic, we can spare. In we can, we can, spare. Sided, we can do uh, complete. I agree. I agree. So, um, Dr. Yasir, mm -hmm. what are the various... Yes, sir. One is only one or... question. So ah, so we have question. If you do in a two sitting, is it going to affect the recurrence or uh, life expectancy or overall survival? Sir, it won't affect, but it will eat up the time. Okay. That's it. And Sir, it will, two sittings huh. means uh, two sittings of lymph node dissection or two sittings means primary and lymph node alert. Two sittings, so as you said, if the uh, frozen section the is... frozen is not there. Yeah. Then you okay. do superficial and no followed problem. by deep. Okay, so Himanshu, uh, I have asked your question to Dr. Mahendra, so I want to ask yes, you a new question. Yes, so suppose if uh, such a patient is there, hmm. the patient which we are dealing with, so will yes, you sir. do a synchronous primary and lymph node or you will do a metachronous primary first and then lymph node? Sir, with the unavailability of frozen section? or it No, is no, 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 everything is available. Chalo. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, with this lesion, we can uh, do a synchronous uh, uh, lymph node dissection. Yes, and when will you uh, think of doing metachronous then? Sir, when the uh, primary tissue, uh, primary tumor is uh, seems to be more infected or uh, large, uh, where the uh, where we uh, have to do a more radical procedure and the healing is an issue, that time we first uh, let the primary uh, uh, surgery heal and then go ahead with a uh, metachronous uh, uh, dissection of lymph node six weeks later. Okay. So and Mahendra, you agree with that? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes Mahendra. Yeah. So, you agree with that? Yeah. So if he is right, if the uh, primary is so infective, we can still proceed because uh, the grand node dissection uh, wound may get infected. Yeah. Uh, but that uh, gap should not be uh, uh, more than a few weeks, maybe two or three weeks. Okay. Okay, sir. So, Yasir, your question, which are the various incisions yes, available for 
so we have the uh, groin, uh, groin incisions just uh, and horizontal incision to uh, to three centimeters below the pubic tubercle, and then uh, we can have a lazy S incision if uh, we want to. Uh, it's a better incision because the question is also which is better. It's a better incision. We can approach uh, the uh, pelvic region also of the ipsilateral side. And uh, one more incision is separate groin incision bilaterally and a separate midline sub umbilical incision uh, for the pelvic right. nerves. So mostly so what you said is best for a incision is, uh, is, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you have to do for a DSMB super... or a modified inguinal lymph node dissection, what will you do? Just will you place uh, your incision? Uh, to... Two centimeters just below and later to the pubic tubercle, and horizontal mm -hmm. incision is given. It basically uh, basically uh, centers around the fossa ovalis uh, for mm -hmm. uh, the uh, this uh, modified one and leaf nodes. That's of type one, four, and five. Uh, to approach those uh, uh, zones, the this incision is better. So Nikhil, the diagram is already in front of you. So yeah. how are these zones divided? And the second question is, which lymph nodes are addressed in a modified ILP? So these are uh, distress uh, nodes. Uh, they are uh, centered around uh, the fossa valley. That is from where uh, the saponous mean uh, comes out from the femoral mean. Sir. So superior medially will be the first one, sir. That is the sentinel node, called the Savanna node. Then uh, superior lateral, sir, then inferior lateral and inferior medial and central zone. These are the five zones that are present. When modified, if we remove these five zones, then it becomes uh, the total. So that is a typical distress node removal. Sir. And modified uh, catalan, that is a modified inguinal, we remove the superior medial, superior lateral nodes. Sir. These are the only two nodes uh, that are removed. Sir. Superior medial and inferior medial. Modified is not superior medial and superior lateral. Uh, most slightly old literature was superior medial, inferior medial, and central. But nowadays, most literature mentions one and five, superior medial and central. So I also was looking into that literature, but could not find anything why it was totally modified. But superior medial and central is most important. Superior medial also contains the Clockett's node, which still is described to be removed. Clockett's node is in where? Nikhil? Classic Clocket. Clocket node is anatomically placed at? It's in the, in the medial most of the, of this thing, the adductor, uh, along the adductor longus, it is placed. Adductor longus. Right. On the adductor longus, it is femoral it is in the femoral, femoral canal. Femoral canal. Femoral canal. compartment femoral of the femoral canal. You can't yes. miss anatomy in an exam. Huh? The medial most. And medial in most between, of while saying superficial also, you said all five zones removed, it is called... Uh, what a complete or a superficial inguinal lymph node dissection. Okay. So yeah. what are the boundaries of that? So the boundaries is uh, medial boundary is found by the adductor long so superiorly is found by the inguinal ligament. Laterally it is by the medial border of the sartorius. Sir. Mm -hmm. And inferiorly is where the sartorius and the adductor meet. Sir. Meet. Correct. So going ahead, I guess this concept is clear to everybody. Mahindra, any addition? Uh, no, sir. Shall then we yeah it's not moving so only if anybody okay. can tell the benefit of a modified no dissection yeah bolo sir, there are uh, quite a few benefits sir. one thing is we give a shorter incision compared to the standard one sir second thing is the dissection when we when we raise the flap uh, in the standard one, we go between the sarpus and the camper fascia. Here we go beneath the sarpus, so the tissue necrosis or the flap necrosis is less. I Third think it's is rule of, it is rule for every GND, not sir. specifically for this, right? You have to go below the scarpa fascia sir. to prevent flap Third necrosis. Okay. So the third benefit is that there is a sparing of saponous uh, veins up here. We don't remove. Fourth thing is that we don't go lateral to the uh, femoral artery, sir, in this thing. Yeah. So what is the benefit? Yes. What are the benefit, the benefit of these steps? Benefit is if we don't go lateral, the injury to 
the femoral nerve is uh, less there, so we mm -hmm. don't injure that. And uh, this thing, uh, it will it will cause less amount of uh, this thing. Uh, lymphedema, lymphedema, flap necrosis, and healing is better in this thing. So reduce flap necrosis. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, reduce lymphoria because you are preserving uh, the saphenous vein, great saphenous vein, yes. and dissection is uh, not uh, that extensive. Okay, yes. so early recovery. These three, four only points. And it is not like that. You are you are preventing the femoral nerve injury. That means every complete uh, no dissection is a femoral injury. No, right? Femoral nerve is uh, quite uh, deep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Since you are talking about femoral nerve, Nikhil, yes. so where where does the femoral nerve mainly supply? Femoral nerve. Sensory, uh... motor, and approximately where? You should Correct. know, no? because if you yes. are going to damage the femoral nerve, we should know these things. Yes. Yeah. So it mainly supplies the cordyceps uh, muscles of the thigh, sir. Vastus lateralis, vastus medialis. And the cordyceps. Water? Then they will get a paralysis. Yes. Hmm? Right now, if, if we cut the motor nerves which supply the quadriceps, then we are going to have a bad paralysis, neurological deficit. Hello, Dr. Murganka, what is the current status of minimally invasive groin node dissection? You sir, can at least tell us some few lines on them. Yes, sir. the full form stands for sir, video endoscopic inguinal lymph, lymph adenectomy. So here uh, we do, it's popularized by actually Tebis. Sir, it's, a, uh, it's done in low lithotomy position, sir. Uh, we draw an inverted triangle. Basis from anterior superior iliac spine to tubercle, laterally sartorius, and medially is our adductor longus. Hello. Yes. So you should tell us something. I mean, don't start at the steps of the surgery. Which, please uh, disconnect with that and tell us something about what is its benefit, how successful it is, is it to be done or not, what does it help us with, like that. You tell us. Uh, if you are reading the whole steps of surgery, I, we, we know that. Yes, sir. The benefits, sir, obviously it is uh, uh, minimally invasive, but learning curve is high. So, and uh, sir, the complications associated with uh, open, uh, this one, uh, radical inguinal lymph node dissection and modified lymph node dissection, Complications rates are lesser, and we can take out both superficial and deep group of lymph nodes with this with this approach, sir, with endoscopic approach, and flap necrosis and seroma formation, and but the thing with this is a limitation. So what are the limitations? Let so for N0, it will be modified. Oh, I mean, like superficial. Would it be modified in going lymph node dissection or super? It will be such superficial uh, lymph node dissection for N0. Okay. Will it be modified or superficial or will it be complete in going So it will be... I have uh, seen most people who do robotic, they do complete in going only. Yes. But for sir, N0 superficial in vinyl lymph node dissection would suffice. So far, uh, basically, benefit of minimally invasive is it tends to prevent or decrease the complications which we would see with open surgery, uh, which would be probably related to the flap thickness and uh, the wound complications which happen mostly. Whereas robotic would still give us the seromas and the, those complications would still might be there. Now the question is, would we do a modified ILD? It is very difficult sometimes. Mostly the people who do minimally invasive, they go for a complete inguinal lymph node dissection. Uh, I have rarely seen anybody do it uh, only about the fascia actually. Uh, Dr. Mahendra, anything you would like to say about these things? 
no okay so i have one request to you uh, would you tell very briefly about how to do dsnb so that we can finish off that topic uh, so uh, dsnb uh, normally we inject the collide uh, nanoparticle collide in around the uh, primary the base of the lesion and uh, after a, uh, one or two hour uh, we check uh, by the gamma camera uh, where the uptake is so we have to see the concentration uh by the camera uh by the probe around the primary and around the uh, groin area and when we there is a uptake uh, we have to identify and that we remove it that node and send for the frozen so this is how uh, that is this can be done and it is a uh, as it is a radioactive uh, thing it uh, uh, wash out very fast so we have to be uh, very quick while doing the the procedure whether i we will get a false uh, uh, negative uh, report in uh, report in this so usually al along with uh, technetium we also inject a blue dye and in some centers uh, before surgery and it is either it can be given at the base of the lesion or sometimes at the root of the penis uh, and uh, peritumoral is the most ideal site but what happens is the lymphatics of uh, penis are in such a way that the distal part drains into the proximal and there is something like a, almost a circular web of lymphatics at the root of the penis from which there is a crossover on both sides to the groins so technically whichever place you give but if you want to answer in exam it is usually peritumoral uh, blue dye and technetium and some centers do use icg nowadays and they have the icg uh, reader cameras with them so out of uh, technetium and blue dye versus technetium and icg technetium icg has found to be a little superior to technetium and blue dye okay so i think uh, sir one more thing i want to add in this yes, uh, this is the scenario where the primary is there but suppose there were the as uh, meganka said that primary is infective and we remove that primary now how to do dsnb in that do those cases so again in the those cases where we remove where the primary site were there at the stem tip of the stem again uh, uh, peri uh, periphery we have to inject the dye and then the is the same procedure the another question we can can be asked in the exam is the sensitivity specificity and the false negative rate of the dsnb so it is up to 90% is the sensitivity and specificity and the up to 12 to 15% are the false negative rate now it is uh, at around 8 to 12% okay okay so important tips while phallus preservation you remember that frozen section is needed there should technically be no oncological compromise as you want to prevent uh, or protect or preserve the function possibly educated and good follow up compliance so uh, we go to the second case again the names are there 45 years smoker uh, dorsal slit hpr plus a biopsy hpr was a papilloma later circumcision was done which shows well differentiated squamous cell cancer again july 16 seen in clinic 2 cm lesion on glands with normal groins no nodal enlargement a partial penectomy was done in this case after his counseling and it was a poorly differentiated squamous cell corpora and urethra free 1 cm margin p16 negative so how to decide further nikhil sir uh, so we have discussed many parts so this case will reinforce what we have discussed till now yes come on sir uh, this patient uh, though he is uh, clinically non negative still uh, we have to counsel the patient and then uh, take him up for uh, this thing sir for the note decision sir okay so thoda sa when you answer you should tell properly i mean this is cn0 i would like yes. to do whatever bilateral dsnb or a bilateral modified inguinal node dissection frozen yes. and as soon as complete so if you are sitting in the exam don't be lazy so himanshu 
so we did a bilateral modified gnd okay the wound looked good yes and uh, it's not moving forward okay so as you know we keep drains on both sides so post op day 13 the left drain was draining 350 ml it came out accidentally so i'm sure you must be having an experience how to manage sir uh, this is a high quantity so uh, there is going to be a definite collection uh, below the flap mm -hmm. so one thing we can do is uh, get a ultrasound guided uh, drain inside if uh, not available what we can do is give uh, adequate padding with the gamji pad and give proper pressure dressing to the patient and uh, I mean, Himanshu, your answer was pretty right. If uh, say I am the patient, the drain is out, and I have come to you after some time, okay, mm -hmm. elapsing, then I would definitely have a seroma. So the option might be to put a drain or something again, or try or aspirate. Yeah, aspirate. However, if I have come to you very early and you can't palpate anything, it's flat. We can try this thing. Give a pressure dressing, whatever. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, 31 years male, ulcer on the penis since six months, left groin mass since four months, fungating since one month. On palpation, groin mass has restricted mobility. So, Nikhil, yeah. what does it mean? Entry, entry disease. Entry disease. Entry like disease. Restricted mobility. Entry disease is what? C N3. Bolo. N3. CN3. So, what is CN3 in DNM? DNM CN3 is uh, uh, like the this thing, the, the staging, sir, or the bilateral fixed nodes. And P, what is PN3? PN3 is uh, more than three nodes uh, are positive, sir. PP. I'm asking you P. P, P, is, P means pathology. If you read DNM carefully, it is pathology. PN3. Yes. So what is PN3? Uh, more than three nodes coming positive uh, is what I remember. Sir, exactly. Extra nodal extension and uh, uh, extra nodal uh, extension of the inguinal nodes or pelvic, pelvic nodes pelvic pelvic node. is called PN3. So, coming back to the same question, Nikhil, sir. why the mobility should be restricted? I mean, if you give an answer like N3, it is not a right. So, what happens? Why the mobility is restricted? <laughs> Uh, the periodinitis. Oh, so the node has grown probably so large that it is involving the sheath. Sheath. It's involving the fascia down, or it's involving even if it grows even further, then it will involve the vascular sheath. Vessels. So penile biopsy in this case reported as invasive squamous cell cancer. CT scan 48 by 41 by 26 millimeter left inguinal mass, no encasement of vessels. I can't see the other thing. No enlarged pelvic nodes. Okay, so that's a picture. So, so you you can see the fungating thing here, and. Uh, I think everybody can see the picture, right? Yes. Here. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we can see the picture. Ah. Quite clear. So, so, so Murugaanka, Dr. Murugaanka. Yes, sir. I know these are limited images, but then can you comment on these two something? Sir, yes, this is a cross-sectional contrast enhanced CTE of the pelvis, sir, showing the femoral vessels very close to the Lymph, enlarging lymph node, almost approaching. I and mean, they are not very close. Huh? There is a plane which is distinctly seen between the vascular sheath and the enlarged lymph node. Yes, sir. But, yes. Very close means there are lymph node enlargements which are actually abutting, uh, going inside the vascular sheath and abutting both the vessels. So, there is a good plane in both these pictures. Okay, come on, continue. And sir, uh, there's lymphadenopathy on the other side as well, uh, on the right side. 
अमेरिकन का या गुड बी स्पेसिफिक लेफ्ट साइड राइट साइड राइट साइड लिम्फ नोड इज पेल्विस पेल्विक बिकॉज इट्स अ दिस इज द इमेजिंग सोइंग पेल्विस आल्सो सो व्हेन वी से लिम्फ नोड पैथी सो आई एम सर्चिंग इन द पेल्विस और इन द इंगनल रीजन यस सो साइट एंड दिस राइट एंड लेफ्ट एंड द एनाटॉमिकल लोकेशन राइट यस यस so bilateral lymphadenopathy and at as of now the femoral arteries are uh, all right and so one of the things why this ct picture is there is uh, this is what happens uh, in the ct when there is restricted mo mobility okay so sorry sorry uh yeah i think uh, this uh, we have discussed already i think imanshu has answered so how will you treat the groin now nikhil sir uh, in this case uh, it is clinically it looks like entry and also the node is restricted sir so here for this patient i would like to go for neoadjuvant uh, chemo sir before you are just chemo okay what chemo you would like to give sir i would like to give uh, him uh, this pattern cyclorurethral and uh, uh, taxin this platin 5 fluoro uracil and taxin so, so somebody gives tip or somebody gives docetaxel and cis platin the 5 fluoro uracil cis platin is i think gone okay so what is the tentative response to chemotherapy in various publications uh, uh, the response is so strongly that i'll give nct what is your intent of giving nct So this now it looks like uh, like it it, it is uh, restricted mobility, but it is away from the tumor. That I understand. See, we, let us not repeat things. Uh, N three, uh, what restricted mobility? We understand. We came to a point where we are planning to give NACT. Yeah. So simple question asked to you: Since you are so confident in giving NACT, what is the response you expect? If I am the patient, if you say chemotherapy, le lo, I'll ask you why chemotherapy? Why are you not operating? Sir, I would want to downstay the things I see and then operate. That I understand. Again, coming back to the same question, what will be the response to chemotherapy? The response uh, seen in the many uh, mainly the Indian studies has been seen uh, in the entry disease has been seen around uh, fifty percent. Uh, after the new adjuvant therapy, Indian studies the response is around thirty-five to forty percent. Thirty-five to forty, and in some studies, fifty percent also. That's the maximum. Uh, that has been seen as a response so, to the new adjuvant therapy. So, Nikhil, if we if we don't achieve a response, then, sir, if we don't achieve, then we can. So there are two things which can happen. Either the disease can be stable, this is what is spoken in the chemotherapy parlance, or the disease can progress. The disease can progress means it can progress local. I mean regionally, as we are seeing the regional yes. disease now, or it will go to metastasis. Okay. Yes. So technically, Doctor Mahendra, what is your advice? What should we do? uh same sir we have to assess the uh, response after the chemotherapy as you said it, it either it will be stable it will regress or it will progress so based on that response we have to decide the treatment if it is still progressing and involve the pelvis node while on chemotherapy then no point in doing any uh, major surgical procedure if it is stable operable or reducing as uh, size decrease so based on disease extents either plast under under plastic cover Surgery cover, or maybe the uh, we can plan directly surgery without any plastic cover. So these are options of treatment: surgery for groin mask with plastic cover, as Dr. Mandra was saying. So many times, uh, an ALT flap is taken, anterior lateral thigh flap, and if the lymph node is typically fungating, and we have to operate it later on. we use a uh, this marking with the anterior lateral thigh flap with a pedicle and we rotate it on this to get some result which is like this so 
uh, NACT and reassess for surgery. In some cases, however, if the patient is, say, not going to take chemotherapy due to some reason, if we have the CT scan, what we saw, where it would be still operable, we do can plan an upfront surgery and go ahead with an adjuvant treatment. Then. Patient may not be sometimes in a position to uh, do a, you know, chemotherapy with respect to its uh, side effects or re requisitions, I mean requirements. So uh, what about the penile surgery in case you are going to do an NACT since uh, Nikhil had answered Nikhil. For the for the uh, penile tumor, sir. Yeah, so so we should uh, probably do uh, penile surgery and then push the patient for a, a nodal. Nodal. Yeah. So this is from the European Association Urology with palpable inguinal node CN1 and 2 radical inguinal lymphadenectomy, fixed inguinal nodes which is CN3. New adjunct chemotherapy followed by radical inguinal lymphadenectomy. As Dr. Mahindra said, only in responders. If the disease progresses, then we may need to do surgery only as a palliative thing. In case of, for the pelvic nodes, ipsilateral pelvic lymphadenectomy, if two or more inguinal nodes are involved on one side, or if extracapsular nodal metastasis is reported. Adjuvant chemotherapy in cases with, who are PN2 or PN3 after surgery. Now the question is about radiotherapy. In European guidelines, radiotherapy is not recommended except as a palliative option. However, in NCCN guidelines, those patients who come out PN3 are recommended CTRT. So overall in CN3 responders to NACT with post chemotherapy surgery, there have been reported uh, to achieve long-term survival in 37%. About chemotherapy, offer patients with PN2 and 3 adjuvant chemotherapy with cisplatin, taxin, 5-fluorouracil or ephosphamide. Offer patients with non-resectable or recurrent lymph node metastasis new adjuvant chemotherapy four cycles of cisplatin and taxin. Many times they use paclitaxel, sometimes docetaxel, followed by radical surgery. Offer palliative chemotherapy to systemic disease. So role of new adjuvant and adjuvant RT. So, so the role of sir, uh, new adjuvant uh, RT is, is to reduce the bulk of the so role of new adjuvant rt is almost uh, experimental Excellent. there is a impact trial which has been going on in the western countries U europe and us and they are having a new adjuvant rt in one arm of the trial so about adjuvant rt i have already mentioned and ncn guidelines do allow chemotherapy with radiation in, in case of pn3 okay yes So I think, uh, Gaurang sir, either we can take uh, Achin's case. Yeah, okay. Because we have completed a big deal of theory, huh. uh, right from whatever, uh, yeah, one thing which we have not completed, which, See, uh, which we, we will come everything. So we will only, uh, as an exam case, we'll just keep it as a small case, uh, let them answer, and then we'll go ahead with your quick uh, all the shots. Uh, no problem, sir. I mean, what I was going to say is uh, we have discussed kind of uh, pathology, uh, treatment protocols, right up to coming to chemotherapy. What we have not discussed is something more in imaging. So you have a thought, Which we cases. can complete in this case, actually, your case. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay, Mahindra. Yes, sir. So, either there is imaging ka ek sirf hai, wo idhar complete karte. And also, uh, one thing for the uh, candidate, jo, uh, panelist, hai ki, uh, jo, uh, keep answer crisp and short. 
Huh. And to the point, whatever has been asked, if something asks benefit, so only tell the benefit. Don't go for the uh, complications yeah, and harm. Start with the history like of the benefit. Benefit is in banks, whatever. Aisa mat bolna, please. Okay, so just be specific. So that's why we can proceed fast. Okay. Yeah. And this how you should do do uh, do in exams also. Achint, you can go ahead. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can hear you also. Okay. Yes. Uh, 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 a Hindu gentleman, 20 years of age, laborer, resident of Delhi, came with complaints of penile tip growth since three months. So, okay, Mirigangka, this is the only. See, quickly we'll go. Uh, this is the history. What are the questions you like to uh, like to ask? Sir, so, uh, uh, since it is a growth in the tip of the penis. Uh, uh, we will ask, uh, we will like to know whether the growth is uh, i mean uh, associated with foul smelling discharge whether it is any associated with hem, uh, bleeding whether there is any uh, associated with splaying of the urine or retention of the urine whether uh, uh, there is any association of fever history of fever history of trauma uh, and uh, size or that will be the local examination. So basically, the, what is, whether he is sexually active, if active, how uh, any number of partners, uh, multiple partners, whether he, he is a smoker. Uh, these are the... Okay, Nikhil, can you just think about it fast? Anything uh, else you want to add? Otherwise, we'll go ahead. Uh, the, the growth of the tumor, sir, uh, is it been stable or is it growing? And uh, whether there is any history of uh, like treatment taken for any other uh, conditions around the place, like psoriasis, like, or uh, is there any history of trauma? And was there any difficulty in passing urine? Like, don't don't repeat, as Dr. Ganesh has said. If you've yes. got any extra point, you just ask. That's it, sir. Yes, sir, whether the growth is painful or painless. Uh, painful or painless, whether it is uh, whether patient can uh, retract the foreskin uh, back, prefuse back or not. Uh, that's it. Okay. History of, history of any history of history of history circumcision. Of, yeah, history of circumcision. Any issue of uh, associated uh, weight loss or loss of appetite? Any uh, symptoms like uh, just uh, breathlessness, hemoptysis, or uh, bone pain or jaundice? Uh, history of uh, smoking uh, cough is okay. Uh, one more thing, Meganga, you missed that. Uh, see the uh, other than number of partners, the uh, when was the first uh, relation was also the age when the early the age the chances of having having uh, cancer. Okay, yes. it linked with the HPV infection, the duration of HPV infection. Fine. Okay. Fine. Okay, right. I think just go uh, ahead with the past history. The patient was apparently asymptomatic three months back when he noticed a small cauliflower-like growth on penile tip, right side, in serious in onset, progressive in nature, now involving almost whole of right aspect of penile tip, with associated with minimal bleeding. Okay. There is no history of trauma, no history of pain, discharge, no history of fever, burning maturation or hematuria, no history of Low urinary tract symptoms, no issue of weight loss, cough, hemoptysis, or dyspnea, no issue of similar growth elsewhere in body mm -hmm. or in past, no issue of any sexual exposure in recent past, no issue of swelling in the growing. Why is it called recent past? In the past or recent past, what is the difference in that? How this word came in the history? Patient answered like the last three four months he hasn't had any sexual exposure. Okay, but uske pehle he was active, right? Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah. So anyway, who is having such such a swelling? Uh, he is not able to uh, act also, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. The past issue should I continue? Yeah, continue. Yeah. Okay. Past issue no issue of any diabetes mellitus, hypertension, pox or pox contacts, no issue of previous surgeries. Family history patient is unmarried. Personal history diet is mixed, appetite adequate, ball bladder regular, sleep undisturbed. Patient is a non-smoker, non-alcoholic, non-tobacco chewer. Uh, 
जनरल परमिशन सर एवरीथिंग इज नॉर्मल सर ठीक है ओके फाइन ओके जस्ट शो देम ओके निखिल यू वांट टू डिस्क्राइब सर दिस दिस इज अ ग्रोथ पॉलिप्लर लाइक ग्रोथ इन्वॉल्विंग द ग्लैंड्स ऑफ द पेनिस सर एंड इट इज इन्वॉल्विंग द looks like involving the coronal region also sir and uh, this image is on the dorsal side of the penis sir so ventral i'm not able to see and the growth uh, looks uh, distant away from the urethra sir so the urethra looks not involved in this picture this is involving the prepuce also so and, what are uh, the... there is huh. there is no hmm. discharge uh, seen from the growth sir but uh, there is some hemorrhage like that seen sir yeah. and the size uh, looks to be around uh, Like two centimeters, uh, like that, sir. And it's a proliferating growth that is seen, sir. So you cannot say it's like a warty growth, no. Also, but it is a warty growth. It is not a proliferative growth, mm. right? Right. Sir. This is the warty growth, and you can also mention the site. Site means approximately two into two centimeter, involving the yes. distal uh, part of the penis, right. involving the part of uh, dorsal part or half or dorsal part of the glands and the uh, part of the sulcus, corona sulcus. Right. Yes. Surface is dry. Okay. Yes. And last is a uh, uh, the some some uh, bleeding at the bleeding, proximal yes. part of the that. Yes. That's all. Urethra is normal as you can see that. Ah, uh, so usually when you are going to in say uh, finding the inspection, I mean this is a picture, but you will have to say the urethral meatus is seen separately at normal or great or abnormal. No edema, right? Yeah. Yeah, and proximal shaft appears normal. 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 Yeah. yeah. So Yasir, when you see all these lesions, what are your differential diagnoses? There can be the benign or the malignant uh, conditions of the penis. Uh, in the age, how many patients? Benign. Twenty years, sir. Twenty. Twenty years. Yeah. So. Tell us. Simply showing you, we can have in the benign and in the pre-malignant condition of the penis, we can divide it into the HPV uh, associated and HPV not associated. In the HPV not associated, we can have a cutaneous harm. Uh, we can have warty uh, lesions. Uh, sorry, not the warty lesion. We can have pseudo uh, epithelioma, uh, keratotic, um, uh, macaceous balanites. and we can have leukoplakia and in the uh, uh, hpv related we can have condyloma and uh, then is the second malignant uh, squamous cell or other types of the uh, penile carcinoma so yes sir in this case the question was what is your dd in this case in this case so leukoplakia kahan se aa gaya leukoplakia to ho nahi sakta na ye cheez जिकल थिंग एंड वॉट एवर यू सी at the moment you have to only take dd uh, those dd in the, in the, into consideration so what can we include we can uh, include uh, condyloma we can condyloma include, uh, okay okay condyloma and what else uh verruca uh, carcinoma मल्टीपल वार्ड ऑल्सो बिकॉज कैन बी सर्फेस इज ड्राई सर्फेस इज एक्सलूटली ड्राई इज नॉट अ सिंगल लिजन एज यू कैन सी देर आर मल्टीपल लिजन दे आर कॉन्ग्लोमेटिंग तो ऐसे बोले तो मतलब पेगेट्स डिसीज़ ऑफ पेनिस भी आ सकता है बट अगेन दैट इज अस्टोपैथोलॉजिकल डायग्नोसिस ओके सो इन दिस नाउ व्हाट वी लाइक टू डू सर आई वुड लाइक टू टेक अ इंसिजनल बायोप्सी ऑफ द लीजन एंड गेट अ हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी ऑफ दैट डन आई वुड लाइक टू टेक अ 
wedge biopsy from the edge of the lesion. Uh, Why you want to take a wedge biopsy? So I want to include the uh, depth of the uh, the tissue uh, in the. I want to know the depth of the lesion, so I would like to take a wedge biopsy. A word you are missing: the normal tissue. You want to take normal tissue. The normal tissue in the wedge biopsy, where you can assess, assess the depth the, of the invasion. Compare right? and assess the depth of. The That's invasion. why you want to take wedge biopsy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so Briganka, in this case, what are the important investigations you like to do? Sir, uske pehle ek sawal hai, Briganka. Haan, bolo, bolo. What are what is the common etiology in penile cancer? Sir, uh, common etiology for penile cancer is the irritative effect of sphagma in uncircumcised mainly patients, human papilloma virus. Then comes the studies smoking. have actually proved that sphagma. Although was known as a carcinogen earlier, is no longer a carcinogen. It can be just associated with bad hygiene, which is also actually one of the causes of penile cancer. So yes. Okay. So that is about your smeg one. Uh, so then, then HPV uh, maybe six, sixty-eight, and thirty-three. Yes, sir. But that's it. Next cause. Uh, multiple sexual expo partners. Yes. Uh, partners with uh, cervicitis, then sir, smoking. Cervicitis uh, is again; it is associated with HPV. It's not a separate cause in penile cancer. Okay, we are not discussing yes. female malignancies yet. It can happen with HPV with relation to penile cancer. So then BXO, then uh, multiple penile trauma. So penile trauma is a very vague reason. Uh, BXO has a two to nine percent chance of having penile cancer etiology wise. Then overall, in expo. general, very poor hygiene. Hygiene standards are very low. Any any one important thing you are missing? Sir, smoking, radiation, smoking. Expo, uh, smoking. treatment with UV. Tobacco. Huh? Tobacco abuse. Tobacco exposure to tobacco. Anything you are saying? Sir, PUVA exposure, uh, yeah, ultraviolet. Sir, rarest cause me ja rahe ho. One of the still straightforward cause is missing. Tum balanitis wagre bol chuke ho. One thing is straightforward. People who have phimosis. 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 For some reasons, maybe that is repeated infections. They are prone to a CFNS. Another yes. very important is the practice of circumcision. Yes. So Nikhil, about yeah. circumcision, what is your take on etiology? Sir, uh, circumcision uh, done uh, during the neonatal period protect from uh, the this thing. Sir, the C Perfect. So neonatal circumcision has shown to have a protective effect. The later circumcisions technically have not shown a protective effect for this penile cancer case. Okay, we continue on the investigations, which sir was asking. So Muruganka, continue. What investigations would you like here? so here uh, we would uh, like to do routine uh, blood investigation including uh, hemoglobin then hypoalbuminemia uh, we will look for that one and uh, hypoalbuminemia sir lft uh, and then uh, then uh, our uh, renal function test sir followed okay. by oh, what is the significance of lft in kind of matlab for deep significance of lft in this case so just to rule out any involvement of the liver Achha, and liver uh, metastasis yes and uh, calcium uh, blood calcium hypercalcemia is a condition as a perineoplastic syndrome then uh, we would like to we can also do as a ultrasound with a 7.5 megahertz linear probe to look for the depth of the uh depth of the this uh, lesion and in obese patient we can go ahead if uh, inguinal uh, palpation is not possible we can go ahead with ct pelvis or mri i did not understand that so in obese patient where inguinal lymphadenopathy cannot be palpated we have to go oh. for ct abdomen uh, ct pelvis or mri 
then Muruganga, in this case, why are you not going for a FDG pet? Because everything you want to see by investigations. Sir, uh, CT abdo, uh, pelvis only indicated in obese, morbidly obese patient where we will not be able to physically examine. Yeah, see, any comments on this uh, whole thing? Uh, so the, uh, this lesion looks more uh, warty. The investigations, I will like to do the routine investigation with CBC, RFT, PTNR, uh, because I'm going for the incisional biopsy. Mm. And uh, yeah. after that, uh, uh, on the physical, uh, this um, examination for the, um, that's also if uh, uh, on the examination, I have confusion regarding uh, the uh, I will see only after the biopsy report whether it is in benign or malignant. Then I will proceed accordingly with the investigations. So, Muruganka, in such a case, if you extend the question to CT scan, I am sure you are going to have difficult questions in your exam. So, if Sorry. I am in your place, I'll say apart from the investigations required, CBC, PT, BTCT for the biopsy. I would maybe agree with you on one point. I'll check a calcium because it is still known in 8% people. But otherwise, I would do a very good local examination in this case. I don't think in this case, the photo shows... Secondly, uh, again, local examination of the groins is one of the best investigation in a penile cancer case. If we have an obese patient, the next best investigation considered today is a high frequency probe sonography where I would like, if I am answering, I would like to do uh, uh, talk to the radiologist and if he finds any abnormal uh, features in the lymph node, I would like them to do an FNAC. Okay. So, uh, Himanshu, what are abnormal features in the lymph node in sonography? So abnormal uh, features and uh, one is uh, uh, the most important are uh, uh, longitudinal uh, to transverse uh, ratio. Uh, the other is uh, uh, loss of fatty hilum. Uh, other include increase in size, increase in vascularity, and areas of necrosis in the lymph. But, but that's it. Loss of fatty hilum and increased vascularity if seen on something. Generally, enlarged lymph node, short axis diameter, etc., is seen on the CT for the lymph node criteria. Mahendra, any any more take on it? Mm, no, sir. Okay. Right. Chalo, Only, aur hai, okay. Last time you had explained what is the Achha. role of MRI, what is the use of MRI in cases of lymph nodes, inguinal lymph nodes? Sir, MRI. If we have a fixed node or a node with restricted mobility in which either it is post chemo, okay, yeah. and we have to operate, or sometimes it is pre chemo and chemo cannot be given, I have to operate it directly. If it is a restricted mobility, I would do an MRI to check its relation of the nodal mass with the vascular structures, which I will see much more clearly. Yes. So that is the only thing. Correct. So the, I, because I remember last lecture also, you right, had right. the same thing. So I want so to... So if it is a restricted point. mobility or a fixed mass, the MRI for the groins is slightly better to give us some more information, especially if we are worrying about the vessels. Yeah. Fine. The only thing, sir, I want to add uh, only two scenarios. So that is apart from the specific cancer, the general thing. Uh, general, you can say in every uh, 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 case like that. Allergy, allergy, allergy to contrast, contrast okay, okay, and equivocal CT scan finding. Right? This, these are the these two are the, these two are the safest uh, indications of doing MRI. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Achin, just go ahead fast. Yes, sir. Local examination. Uh... Uh, patient is non circumscribed with solitary ulcer proliferative growth over right aspect of glass, roughly around 4 by 3 centimeter, irregular shape with irregular margin, with little surrounding edema, fixed to underlying structure, no inguinal lymph node enlargement present. Inspection wise. While patient, there is no localized of temperature tenderness, uh, surface is rough, form inconsistency with minimal bleeding on touch, 
inguinal nodes not palpable phenyl meatus shaft are normal prepuce is retractile all hernial orifices are normal yeah go ahead parietal examination sir no specific positive finding nodes okay investigation hemoglobin is 13.2 count is 10000 creatinine is 0.8 routine micro shows wbc is nil rbc is 10 to 12 per hyperfield go ahead and ultrasound abdo qob with inguinal scrotal region uh, there is no abnormality sir fine finally show the biopsy okay this is a biopsy Penile intraepithelial neoplasia, high grade, warty type. So, penile intraepithelial neoplasia is actually a pre-malignant lesion, na? Pre-malignant okay. cutaneous lesion. Yes. It is, in so, other Nikhil, words, called carcinoma in situ. Yeah. So, Nikhil, what do you like to do in this? Sir, uh, this is. Uh, this is PI and sir, uh, uh, low uh, grade, but here it is given high grade and warty type and uh, no negative question. So, uh, I would like to go for excision, sir. Of the thing. Hmm. Do you think something is missing in the uh, on examination? You thought it is a malignancy? On examination, uh, it is looking warty type, sir. So, malignancy. I was not very uh, resting pressure. Sir, so, but biopsy. Do you want to take a second opinion or do you want to repeat the biopsy? Yes, sir. I, I, I definitely want to do that. Uh, from so what was your gut part? feeling when you saw the lesion? You thought it is malignancy? No, sir. I, I, I was uh, thinking it will be a non malignant lesion only because it is looking watery type. So, Resting, sir, not very sure, sir. Because if you send any case to Tata Hospital, they will not accept your finding. They will like to do everything again and repeat. So anyway, Achin, show them the second biopsy report. Second biopsy report has a commas condylum accumulator, which is a is a thing what which but is benign also no malignancy no it's a not malignancy it's a benign so now sir it's a so benign. just to add something uh, nikhil one minute huh? so the earlier diagnosis was penile intraepithelial neoplasia which we call as cis so the commonest things is uh, erythroplasia of curette okay which it's which arises on the glands and the prepuce it's something like a red velvety lesion classically described and uh, one which comes on the shaft cis oh. pein is called bowen's disease and the third one if at all has been described by oh, no. in a publication is bowenoid oh. something papulosis yes, so there is a chance of progression into invasive carcinoma in men with these two lesions erythroplasia as well as bowen's in five to 33% if not treated primarily. Treated in the sense, uh, probably they need to be excised. So if they are not treated, there is a 5 to 33% chance. So that is just about uh, to complete about PEIN or CIS. So go on. I mean, go on the next slide, please. But this is all, yeah. So here the diagnosis is benign. So, Yasir, what you will do for this case now? Uh, second, use the tropical agents like uh, make you more. Uh, you think that local second, application will be helpful in such a big lesion? Excision will be, sir, second option and a better option. Dr. Gite, what is your say on this? Usually, uh, this is a, uh, if it is a or even it is large, it is called as a buscalo institution room. And uh, if for diagnosis, uh, usually this type of lesions are not associated with the uh, uh, positive or palpable nodes. These are usually slow going and destructive locally. 
uh, it may present like a cauliflower like uh, growth or fungating growth uh, if you want to get rid of uh, completely the surgery is the uh, best choice in this type of treatment particularly in this patient other options are available like podophyllin imiquidin cryo and tk Uh, these are the uh, alternative options, but for this particular patient, surgery is the best uh, treatment as far as we are concerned. Yeah. Okay. I think Ganesh, we can stop here. You can take your cases. Yes, sir. Or something else is there? Discussion. Doctor, do you want to discuss anything more in this? No, sir. Let's go. Okay. Fine. I think pre malignant bhi ho gaya na etiology bhi ho gaya so we have discussed i think most points you have discussed already now okay okay so to show any slide and just ask in brief ha ah, wo hai mere paas that i'll continue yeah we finished at this slide na yeah so uh, see now next are very quick kind of cases so this will be this is addressed to one person each himanshu this is your scenario sir uh, uh 52 years male presented with this picture which you are seeing yes, looks sir. a profuse growth sir with a difficulty to retract profuse i will counsel the patient that this is a suspicious growth and i would like to advise him to undergo a circumcision which will take care of the growth itself if malignant and uh, we'll get an idea also yes what is the pathology but we did a dorsal slit and found this surprise inside so circumcision mein kya ho jata sir uh, if we find this uh, kind of a picture then uh, so ideally we... i mean these all single slides are supposed to stimulate something generally yeah. when we have phimosis and as we all spoke that we need to see the whole intent or the extent of the tumor and also mm -hmm. take a biopsy in the right manner as you only said so yes. we need to do a dorsal slit in phimosis many times and check otherwise yeah. you are right but we would need to do a dorsal slit see what okay. is inside then send a biopsy because now this looks big right yes sir so i'll have to cut somewhere i don't know here in mm. that case i need a biopsy and a mandatory biopsy actually before i cut yes. anything okay yes so i hope uh, things are clear with that respect yes so this is the moral of the story never assess without retracting the prepuce if necessary do a dorsal slit yes sir okay yeah, yeah. i was changing the slide dr nikhil sir 55 years presented with a penile proliferative lesion biopsy moderately differentiated cn0 sir this is what was seen on examination so you answer and dr mahendra sir will respond to you yes sir like a uh, uh, sort of partial phenectomy we can plan sir but 2 uh, cm is adequate uh, unstretched length is what we require here yeah, 1.5 cm is stretch phenectomy vision so dr nikhil uh, in exam you can't say 2 cm 1 cm 3 cm 4 cm you have to be looking confident to the examiner and provide concrete answers your examiner looking, is dr mahendra sorry so uh, yeah so looking at this uh, picture and examination uh, i think uh, partial phenectomy can be given for this patient okay what are the prerequisites of partial phenectomy So the unstretched penile length of at least uh, two centimeter is uh, required, and the uh, margin should be negative. Unstretched penile length of two centimeter. What does it mean? But, uh, the stump that we you need. You want to have a micro penis uh, like this, two centimeter of the should be a stump. The yes, remaining stump. stump should be below two centimeter, right? Two centimeter. So yes. remaining. So I, remaining I just add a question, Mahendra. Sorry for interrupting, yeah. because that question was supposed to actually come here. What is the ideal stump length? 
Nikhil, you answer to Dr. Mahendra. Ideal length, ideal stem. What is it in after partial tenning term? Sir, uh, ideal the idea is the, for the for standing and voiding, sir. So minimum of uh, two centimeter is what we take. Sir. Hmm. Fine. And uh, why this uh, uh, toothpick is there in the, the photo? Sir, uh, the, I think uh, that is a palpation uh, finding. I think that till where the uh, lesion is extending. Which is not visible, but which is palpable, I think. Yeah, so this you have to just already it is written and isn't demarcated. Yes. By this. Okay. Yes. So Nikhil, the slide already tells you after adequate margin, only 1.5 centimeter remains. So so how do you define ideal stump of partial penectomy? Sir, but uh, still I I what I'm seeing in the picture, sir, I feel it is adequate for uh, this person because he doesn't look that obese also that uh, after giving the stump, it will be buried inside. So I feel he can still stand and wipe after the body. Okay. What else the... Uh... Uh, is there any take of anybody? Sir, uh, since uh, adequate stump length is not there, we will go for total penectomy and uh, perineal urethrostomy. So now we have two school of thoughts in this patient. So what would be the best option for him? Okay, in between your schools of thought, I'll define at least what is the ideal stump. Ideal stump is which allows the person for upright maturation without scrotal soiling and a length which is ideal enough for a sexual satisfaction, which again goes to a minimum length which remains of at least two centimeters. Mahindra, my definition is okay? Yes, sir. Absolutely right. So, abhi definition batai mene. Now, go on both sides. Nikhil, you defend yourself. Miganka, you defend yourself. Just for fun. No, yes, no, sir, not uh, for sir, one, for exam. Yeah, yeah, exam. Sir, uh, for exam, uh, sir, I, I am in favor of partial penectomy because I think it is uh, like less morbid for the patient. If we can give uh, uh, a basic uh, prerequisite for this thing, it would avoid the psychological trauma that the patient will be having a perineal urethrostomy and he has to avoid the uh, retinous spreading position. And he can stand and avoid with 1.5 centimeters also. And even though the sexual function is compromised, I think it is a, a good thing for the So, Nikhil, a corollary of a question to you is, how much penile length is adequate for you for the stump? You can, if, if things given to you, you will say 5 millimeter is also okay because a patient can stand and piss like a pitchkari. Sir, sir here, uh, 1.5 centimeter already remains. Sir. The compromise is of 0 0.5 centimeter. So, I'm just... Uh, Giving him the personally, if I am the examiner, I'll give zero on that because partial penectomy the concept is for both, and with stumps as good as one centimeter, 1.5 centimeter, many times you have seen scrotal soiling with urine, which itself causes a big trauma. It's more psychological trauma. I don't know, anyways. Jitesh, sir, kuch baat kare. And then whatever the already standard described the definition you are told now, there should not be any deviation in that. Yeah, two centimeter means two centimeters. Yeah, deviation in exam should not be there because personally so, your IFT uh, things uh, come. Then examiner will uh, tell the uh, 10, 10 things. I, I feel 5, five millimeters. I like the rest Then is it okay? No, it is not okay. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the ideal definition given by Bhakti says, that should be. Uh, satisfied with the remaining stump. So, uh, Mahendra, shall we, your final take because the purpose of this slide itself is for yeah. deciding so, whether you will do a partial or a total. Yeah. And things so, should be demarcated very clearly. Yeah, sir, so these two lines are self explanatory that is stressed penile length. Uh, after that, only 1.5 centimeter remains. So, that means in a, in a non stressed uh, condition, it will be around uh, 1 to 0.5 centimeter. Right, and when after the surgery, it is going to bury uh, at, at the uh, in the skin. 
So I think uh, in this case, uh, total penectomy with penectomy will be the better option, not the partial penectomy. Because whatever the prerequisites for the partial penectomy is not uh, fulfilling over here. Right, Nikhil? Yes, sir. So it, there's a no harm if you have a thought of partial penectomy and just you change your thoughts as per the situation. Okay? Okay. okay. Yeah, sir, this is for you. Yes, sir. 71 years, ECOG 0 operated 16 months back for partial penectomy and bilateral modified GND. PT2, N0, M0, moderately differentiated, right side 0 by 10, left side 0 by 8 nodes. Yes, sir. Now, after 16 months, left sided inguinal node 2 centimeter palpable. FNAC done positive for squamous cell cancer. Right side is normal. Primary is normal. So what should we do? Sir, as the left side is positive, primary side is okay. So I will go with uh, left with, uh, ilio uh, iguinal dissection and uh, right side modified inguinal. Why right side ka modified inguinal dissection already ho chuka hai sola mene pehle. See upar. Bilateral, yes sir. So tu dubara kaun se step karenge? So, I mean, Yasir, uh, I hope you got my question, right? Yes, sir, I got it. Uh, so, we were just waiting. So, for left you. side, ilio inguinal and... Uh, I don't know, sir, about the other side, I think. Huh? So left side, definitely ilio inguinal and on the right side... Left side ilio inguinal. Okay. Yes, sir. Any take, Himanshu, any take on it? Sir, left side uh, pelvic nodes also we would like to address. So, left side uh, complete ilio inguinal dissection. What about the right side? Yes. Mm. Nahi? So generally, there is a cutoff of 12 months. If it is beyond, we do only address the side concerned. If it is within, then we address both the sides. So that's the answer here. Okay. Okay. Dr. Muruganka, you have to say. Pinectomy and bilateral GND done. Moderately differentiated squamous cell margins negative, groins bilateral, one node positive, no PNE, pelvic negative. Patient further defaulted and came now with this. The groins are normal. It's only bilateral, one node positive, no. Defaulted. So, so we can, uh, since he is uh, not a uh, compliant, uh, we can go for total penectomy. No, no, you consider that suddenly has become compliant. Yes. So this stump uh, it doesn't look healthy. That I know because it looks like uh, if I do a biopsy of that, it will come squamous cell cancer. Yes, sir. So it is technically the diagnosis here is stump recurrence. Yes, sir. So we will do a radical uh, penectomy. Radical penectomy. Okay. Followed by uh, so bilateral bilateral uh, uh, so if I say that the groins, how will you, uh, if I say, don't say that the groins are normal, how will you go about it? 
if the uh, groins are uh, not normal sir we will uh, evaluate uh, with uh, and go accordingly right if you right. if there is a palpable node on any side then we will do probably an fnc fnc if yeah. it is obese and palp not palpable we will do sonography and fnc suppose right, if it is cn0 cn0 yes and then sir uh, so mruganka do you know what all includes cn0 सब क्लिनिक के लिए एन जीरो बेसिकली सर नॉन पेल्पेबल सो ऑल दिस फीचर्स ऑन लोकल एग्जामिनेशन देयर इज नो नोड पेल्पेबल और इफ देयर आर सम नोड्स पेल्पेबल फीलिंग मोबाइल एंड सॉफ्ट एंड इफ आई डू अ सोनोग्राफी एंड द फीचर्स आर नेगेटिव और समटाइम्स इफ आई सस्पेक्ट समथिंग एंड डू एन एफएनएसी फाइनली एंड स्टिल फाइंड इट नेगेटिव ऑल दिस कंट्रीब्यूट टू अ सीएन जीरो ओके that's how tnmc defines it okay yes so if i say with this kind of picture with stump recurrence he is still cn0 what you will do uh so we will uh, go for sir red uh, bilateral uh, prophylactic अरे हुआ है ना सी ना हिस्ट्री हिस्ट्री तो देखो पेनेक्टोमी प्लस बायोलैटरल जी एंड एचपीआर दिया है तुमको ग्रोइंग बायोलैटरल वन नोड पॉजिटिव नो पीएनई हेंस पेल्विक नोड डिसेक्शन इज देन पेल्विक नेगेटिव सो इफ दिस इज सी एंड 0 वी प्रोबेबली कांट डू एनीथिंग मच वी हैव टू ऑब्जर्व दिस पेशेंट फॉर द ग्रोइंग्स एंड वी हैव टू डू अ स्टंप व्हाटएवर टोटल इट विल लैंड अप विद अ टोटल पेनेक्टोमी और अ रेडिकल पेनेक्टोमी व्हाट यू कैन से सो विद अ पेरिनियल यूरेथ्रोस्टोमी रिकंस्ट्रक्शन यस So any any questions anybody has on that? Because lot of things were there on that slide which you should have picked up. This was a scenario given to you. It can come as a scenario in your exam. Yes. Imanchu, fifty-seven years male, CA penis with enlarged lymphoma <coughs> treated with penectomy with complete bilateral ileo inguinal lymph node dissection. हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी पी टी टू एन थ्री एम जीरो एट जी एंड कीमो प्लस आर टी दैट इज योर क्वेश्चन वॉट कुड है intraoperatively intraoperatively and uh, postoperatively uh, uh, this could be managed intraoperatively meticulous uh, dissection uh, uh, making sure that the uh, lymphatics are ligated and not cauterized uh, other thing is uh, uh, immediate postoperatively the patient could be uh, given uh, compression stockings and so himanchu once very small question to you what do you see on the right leg it is uh, lymphedema it's gross lymphedema right gross lymphedema something yes. very near to elephant yeah yeah so what better could have been done one remote thing is we could have avoided a radiation yeah but ncc okay. and guidelines do allow that in n3 what could have been done is yeah. probably it looks like that whoever has probably given radiation has given it with a older type of a machine with lot of scatter radiation okay which even more fibrosis the somewhat remaining functioning lymphatics so in today's times uh, what we see at least at at hospital is they give igrt with refined templates when they give a radiation to pelvic lymph nodes so that these kind of complications are reduced okay so yes, sir. any addition you want to do uh only thing i think himanshu was mentioning about the uh, talking then thing uh, uh clipping and uh, uh, not uh, quartering mm -hmm. the it is it is for lymphoria okay what you are lymphoria. saying not about yeah. the lymphedema 
you yeah. it's a clearer concept yes okay? yes yeah and uh, to prevent the lymphedema mm -hmm. post operatively exercises mobilization wearing stockings okay yes. these are the common thing which uh, the physiotherapy uh, to be done actually and even he received rt it should be done uh, more frequent more of it is yeah Nikhil, short question to you. Sir, I would like to go for uh, total penectomy, sir. In, in patient A, total penectomy. Yeah. You think you will get a racket shaped incision here? Uh, sir, it's uh, spreading more uh, sir, on the page. Yeah. Where is it spreading here? It's involving uh, the total uh, skin also, sir. The root of the scrotum. So, so what is the surgery called? Radical. Radical. Radical surgery is done in all cancers, but what is it called? Okay, chalo. One step down. Sir. Patient B or C ka bolo. Sir, uh, here uh, radical connection with uh, scrotectum. Uh, so generally we call it penoscrotectomy. Penoscrotectomy. And there will be some kind of reconstruction if this skin doesn't come here and a perineal urethrostomy down. Yes. Okay. Yes. So these are all locally advanced. Same cases like you can see that. Yes. And some pictures where you can see it is coming here the upper part of the scrotum and then these are nodes you can see these elevations yes. so a surgery like this i think mahindra has done this surgery yes sir and this is the final take the urethra will be perineal uh, Dr. Muganka, 62 years, diabetic, male, smoker, presented with penile lesion and enlarged groin nodes like this at presentation. So, on investigations, disease is metastatic. Yes. In so, what are you doing? Sir. How will you counsel the patient and should we treat, should we not? Tell both the answers. Sir, he is 62 years, so we should go ahead with the treatment. The treatment would be... Uh, Dr. Mahendra should uh, take this case for you. Okay. Yeah, well, Anka. Go ahead. So, sir, we would like to treat this patient uh -huh. uh, with uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy. Okay. If he if he responds to the treatment, mm -hmm. then we can go ahead with uh, formal uh, penectomy and uh, lymph node dissection, both bilateral pelvic lymph node dissection very and good, flap flap reconstruction may be required. Fine. Which flaps? So we can get uh, local or regional flaps, local flaps, sarcoidus, tensofascia lata, gracilis, mm -hmm. and re, uh, other. Uh, Regional flap. Uh, loudly, be, can you talk, please? Sir, regional flap would be rectus abdominis or all. Uh, so you will give new adjuvant chemotherapy, then downsize the disease, then operate and then give flaps. And please also let us know the statistics of the survival. All over to you, Mahendra. Yeah. So first answer. You do you have any answer of uh, survival? Any stage four disease of trial cancer? So very two. What is the concept of new adjuvant? So uh, the concept of new adjuvant is to uh, treat the metastatic disease without delaying due to primary treatment. Okay. So it is macro or micro metastasis. Oh, it's macro, sir, because the whole lung can... Macro. Okay. Okay. 
<coughs> so so Ganka, uh, you have still not answered the question which Dr. Mahindra asked you. What is the concept of new adjuvant chemotherapy in, say, for example, bladder cancer? You said to treat micrometastatic disease, right? So uh, new adjuvant, uh, the concept is to make the unresectable uh, primary to resectable or downgrade. So exactly. Yeah. So in stage four disease, what is your concept of treatment? That is what we are asking you. Stage four. So my concept of treatment in stage four disease is palliative. Do you understand the meaning of word palliative? Yes, sir. Palliative. Okay. Now, how do you palliate? Uh, with, uh, sir, uh, pain relief and improving the... Correct. Very good. Uh, sir, diversion of the urinary... Yes, maybe. Correct. So then, if patient is little bit fit enough, we can add palliative chemotherapy. Okay, so you understood where new adjuvant lies and where palliative lies. Right. If you make such gross statements, you know you will have gross implications. So what more you can do? You can do a palliative diversion for the urine or sometimes this looks very ghastly, but a palliative panectomy can be done sometimes. Right? Yes. So, so Mahendra, any, any, any take finally on this matlab, to tell them? So first of all, the concept of uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy where uh, you are planning for definitive therapy for the primary. Okay there is a role of new adjuvant chemotherapy. So you can say up to stage three, up to stage three, there is a role of chemotherapy, a new adjuvant chemotherapy. In stage four, you should not use this term new adjuvant chemotherapy. Right? See a test is, there is no stage four also. Okay? But just for uh, knowledge. So this is how you should use your term carefully because if you suppose that in this case you, you use this word in exam, new adjuvant chemotherapy, then you are digging your grave in the exam. Right? Yes. They okay, will... Roganka, got it? Yes, sir. The message should be clear. Yes. So pal chemo, role of palliative so remember, always think what you are going to say. Observe properly about staging in cancer always. Okay. Last question to Sir Kotha actually. Your video. Okay. Yeah. 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 Multiple. <laughs> Sir, nahi hai, lagta hai. So sometimes patients Hello? look like me. Ah. Yeah. Sir, I'm, I'm I'm really puzzled. Rakha tha yeah. I think in this I will just uh give whatever best I can give to the patient. Just a little palliative. If he is not able to pass urine, just do a supra pubic, just diversion. Nothing more can be done. Right, just right, control right. him and yeah. see that he dies peacefully. Yeah. So just for the students, uh, if you see here, this is the penis. This is scrotum with satellite nodules, which we call here also there are satellite nodules. This may be fungating lymph nodes. Okay. So that's it. No, no. I think this is done. Done. Okay. One last one. 
often we have uh, we have covered this actually in the pre malignant things but often we have patients coming to the clinics with these things reddish lesions lesions on the penile glands and a anxious patient will come and ask you what is this so nikhil this is actually a spot diagnosis it looks like a penile horn yes it looks like a cutaneous cutaneous penile the terminology is cutaneous on you are perfectly right and uh, there are some things like that also this can be these are some warts and this is something like a vxo yeah. this is something like a eq erythroplasia curat okay sir done khatam ho gaya matlab i have only this much now you are done <laughs> so thank you thank you thank you thank you everybody good night thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir good night mahendra kya kar rahe ho bas sir abhi kal ke taiyari hoti i am so thankful acha just just sir now one question has come role of hpv vaccine ha bata do tum acha so ganesh and mahendra this was i think one of the best clinic i am telling you on youtube when we will put it all the students are going to be benefited and even in my life i have not seen such so many different cases and even if i am given such cases i will be puzzled what to do you know is a real eye opener and i hope yeah. that in future with other malignancies also we can conduct such a clinics because all the students are really really benefited by this thanks okay. to both of you thank you very thank much you, thank, thank you sir thank you i mean we we'll have to collect things like that and make a presentation so this was aimed at giving a full scenario of penile cancer at one go yes uh, sir let me answer that question about the vaccine yes, yes. as well as answering about the vaccine yeah <laughs> so other than corona corona vaccine okay so uh for the female we have a, a prophylactic uh, vaccination for the hpv and uh, for the male it is under still under, under trial so there are three types of vaccine for the hpv it is a, a univariant uh, uh, bivariant uh, and uh, uh, nonavar nonavalent so uh, uni may uh, bi may bi may they have a uh, uh, hpv 16 and 18 and uh, quadri may they have a uh, 16 18 1 and uh, 6 and nona may they have multiple hpv they covered all the hpv uh, strain strain in that but still they are under under still trial and if has should be given should be given before the puberty before the patient before the person achieve uh, uh, this thing uh, any sexual activity so this is the best time to be given but still it is under trial it is not recommended uh, in, in guidelines i think this answer is clear about the vaccine of hpv yeah yeah absolutely yes sir Okay. So it will protect against some kind of warts, viral skin lesions, and maybe in future about penile cancer also, yeah. if it is squamous cell. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, Good night. You. And once thank again, happy birthday. birthday. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you to all of you. Thank 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 you. And all the students have really answered well. I am very happy. Yeah, yeah. They answered well. They have read and come. So that next time also, if you all read and come, whatever is the topic, it really helps. I think. I mean, there is a more fruitful discussion. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good bye. Good Thank you. Good night. 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 सर लग रहा है एरन को नींद भी आएगी एरन भाई को नींद भी आएगी लास्ट टाइम देखा था ना आपने एकदम मस्त बताया था लास्ट टाइम भी यू हैड शोन इन द आफ्टरनून वी वर डिस्कसिंग दैट ओनली वो वन सिंपल रोल ऑफ एमआरआई वी वर डिस्कसिंग इन द आफ्टरनून विद गणेश बराबर बराबर सर आई टोल्ड दैट वेसल इन्वॉल्वड होएगा तभी बोलने का नहीं तो नहीं बोलने का ओके ओके गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गुड नाइट सर गुड नाइट एरन भाई बाय गुड नाइट गुड नाइट ऑल द बॉय बाय